sometimes and lately more and more often a young woman has been bothered by the fact that her husband has started eating a lot and she doesn't mind sharing food it's just that sometimes she wants to relax and it turns out as it did that time once again she came home from work opened the refrigerator and stared at the empty shelves not exactly empty shelves there was something on them but in transparent wrappers there was nothing but remnants it was annoying and hurtful she had no strength to deal with it anna closed the refrigerator and slumped into a chair what's wrong she thought it's like a nightmare she cooks for several days and everything is eaten up instantly like a cow licking its tongue all the leftovers remain at best in the sink or more often in the refrigerator with symbolic remnants that won't even be enough for one tooth even if she doesn't cook there's still nothing to eat when she comes home from work of course she understands that her husband needs something to eat but at this rate he'll gain weight and the door won't fit it's doubly hurtful that everything remains the same she needs to cook and clean up after her husband he could do it himself of course anna thought that maybe today the situation would change she told her husband yesterday that she would have a quarterly report and he didn't want to bother she didn't want to bother with the kitchen so she hoped that the food would stay at least something clicked in his head and he left her something to eat she didn't rush all the numbers in the report wouldn't need rechecking she wouldn't have to cook anything but no again as always another disappointment from the refrigerator tired she walked across the room to her husband a man he was watching tv it was clear that it was too late he had already had dinner without her when anna entered the room a man didn't even turn around where's the food she asked i ate it a man replied impassively in a sense anna was puzzled you had guessed right i cooked a whole bunch of things just yesterday the young woman exclaimed batting her eyelashes looking at her husband imani gazed at her as if she had done something wrong but on the contrary yesterday anna had cooked a whole pot of chicken soup pasta and cutlets hoping that her husband wouldn't be hungry the whole day and she wouldn't have to bother after work and could eat calmly no one was here i told you after the pause the husband said looking challengingly at his wife whose face expressed the question was i just hungry are you sorry or something he had it staring at the tv again the young woman turned around and went back to the kitchen she was also hungry but no one thought about it she was already irritated with a little plate of chicken soup or pasta grumbling she wondered couldn't you leave some how much can one person eat she spoke quietly because at the same time she was angry and understood her husband she didn't want him to think that she felt sorry for him not having enough food but how could one eat such portions no matter how you look at it she couldn't understand how so much could fit into one person and such nonsense for the second month the man's stomach should have started growing but he maintained his shape maybe some illness but she didn't even know what kind of illness it could be maybe worms but probably there are some other symptoms and the man feels fine lively always running around maybe she should talk to him about it anna went back to the living room but stood in the doorway and returned to the kitchen it made no sense to talk to him she knew him well he sat offended demonstratively staring at the tv attentively examining it there was an advertisement plain which he had 
probably seen many times. In the video, since uh, that's the case, the wife didn't bother him either. After all, she could have been offended by him as well. She didn't make any complaints, just made herself a sandwich. After all, no one had taken care of her, which made it even more upsetting. She ate her dry sandwich, washed it down with tea, and sobbed quietly, not very present in this situation. She decided to talk to her husband later. She took a shower and went to bed. Although she was tired, she couldn't fall asleep for a long time, replaying everything in her mind, trying to find justification for her husband. A man came, laid down, turned away from her and asked if she was asleep or not. Upon hearing no, he said that tomorrow morning he would help his brother move some second-hand furniture he bought cheaply. The seller is far away. The next morning, Anna woke up with a terrible headache. It seemed like all the thoughts from yesterday were crowding in her head, not fitting but not wanting to leave. She had to get up with her husband to take a pill. It was still early for work and she said that she could prepare soup. The man perked up and said thank you because he was tired. The wife tried to smile. A strange brother, brother could have fed the assistant, but she kept silent, afraid a man would be offended. When her husband left, she called to work and asked to work from home, but her colleagues, not understanding, advised her to get some sleep. However, the pill eventually took effect and she decided that since she got up, she would cook and then relax. Like a true hostess, she couldn't stop until she had cooked soup, fried cutlets, and baked a pie. She wanted to have a serious talk with her husband today, so she needed to appease him somehow. Addie likes to eat, but her head started aching again. She took one more pill and went to rest. Work didn't bother her and she decided to take a nap. Since she hadn't slept all night, she dozed off instantly. However, she woke up abruptly from the sound of someone clattering dishes in the kitchen. Anna rubbed her eyes and looked around. Her husband should have come back in the evening, could it be? In the video, a female voice singing a cheerful children's song could be heard from the kitchen. Anna's sleep was interrupted. And, judging by the voice, she recognized her husband's sister, Leona, who loved to sing and was always a cheerful soul, constantly humming something to herself. Anna glanced at the clock. She had only slept for about 20 minutes. Her husband definitely couldn't have returned so soon, but maybe everything was cancelled, and he came back with his sister. The young woman listened carefully. Besides the halls, no one else was there. Quietly, Anna walked into the kitchen and was shocked to find Leona there on her own doing something. Nobody called her and nobody was expecting her. It seemed she didn't have the she did have the habit of coming without an invitation. For a few seconds the hostess observed how the guest calmly poured soup into a three-liter jar and in her bowl there were already some cutlets. A man was not there. In other words, straighten up. What's interesting with a challenge, she asked. Well, first of all, how did you get here? And secondly, what are you doing here? Anna inquired. The intruder was momentarily taken aback, but then said, that her brother gave her the keys and allowed her to take some food. Why not? A little round-eyed. Anna just realized what was happening. Everything fell into place. It wasn't her husband eating everything. It was his little sister taking all the food. Not all. Anna noticed that Leona left one cutlet. What generosity! Was she really worried about her brother? The young wife was in shock. 
Her husband, the good-for-nothing, had not been working for a long time, couldn't find anything suitable, and not only was he living off his wife, but he also burdened his family onto her. You've been feeding yourselves on my account for a long time, Anna asked. Although she already understood that for months, she had been played for a naive fool. Leona portrayed herself as a naive fool, claiming that it was the first time and she had difficulties with money. There wasn't enough. She couldn't allow the children to go hungry. Anna remarked that it would have been better if she hadn't allowed the children to be born earlier. Leona often went out, complaining that she needed to find a young husband. The mother worried that her daughter was pregnant with a third child and there would be no husband. Understanding the situation, Leona also couldn't live with her parents. The mother was normal, understanding, not causing scandals, but the father was a real tyrant. In the end, the halls were living. She doesn't work separately, receiving child benefits and child support for one child. Since only the first child was born in wedlock, the mother helps her as much as possible to avoid the father knowing. Otherwise, he disapproves of it. Now it turns out that the little brother volunteered to help, but it wouldn't be an issue if he were earning something himself or if he wasn't doing it behind his wife's back. Anna was not happy that Leona's family was living off her. They had arranged everything well. No need to cook, no need to buy groceries. They would either give the children to the grandmother or feed them with what their aunt prepared. Anna would also like to live like that without bothering in the kitchen. She said that it could be forgiven once and in general. Her brother allowed it. She thought he had coordinated everything with her. Do what you want, but not behind my wife's back. Or better yet, earn something yourself, Anna told him. Leona didn't like that the family was living off her, and she openly expressed her displeasure, implying that she would call the police if Anna challenged her. Anna asserted that she wouldn't tolerate Leona's presence and would report her as illegal. Leona called her nasty and greedy, saying that as soon as a man gets tired of her, he should find another wife. Anna replied that she wouldn't mind surviving this impudent guest. Naturally, she took the keys for the first time. She agreed with the trick, admitting that she wasn't suitable for her brother. Anna tried to appear confident, but inside she was torn apart. As soon as the door closed, she burst into tears. Now she felt like a complete fool. Her husband was just using her and the tears spent together were so disappointing. She had tried so hard for a man to be happy doing everything for him, not complaining when he quit his job, supporting him, waiting for him to find a job he liked, but a man was content as long as his wife was earning money. He helped his sister, brother, parents, anyone but his wife. And he lied to her. Anna wasn't going to forgive this. She wiped away her tears and went to pack her husband's things. With one suitcase, he didn't take much. But she struggled to close it. She checked the apartment once again. Although, if she found something, she'd just take it to the dump. She didn't wait for her spouse to return. Instead, she took a taxi and brought his suitcase to his parents. Her father-in-law began to protest, but his wife waved him off, asking him not to interfere. Apparently, her daughter had already informed them, or maybe they were aware. The future mother-in-law, not knowing that her daughter-in-law was listening, expressed only regret. She had communicated well with her daughter-in-law and was always happy that her son had found a good wife. Now they would have to take their son back. Anna decisively said that a man would not return to her. On the way home, 
She called him and informed him that he was now living with his own family. He should stay there because he no longer lived with her. A man started yelling at her, saying that she would regret it. But his wife stated that she regretted only one thing, marrying him. Soon she found out that a man and his sister and her children were living with their parents again and dreaming of moving out. But that was their business. Let them work and figure out how to live on their own. They had learned to live off others. Now let them work it out themselves. It helps to solve problems. We have come to the end of the story and thank you so much for listening until the end. Please give this video a like and remember to subscribe to the channel. Click the notifications bell to know when new videos are being uploaded. Also, share this video with your family and friends. So, until next time.